Welcome to the Larry Kreider's Leadership Podcast. Larry is the author of over 40 books, the founder of Dove International, a worldwide family of churches and ministries in six continents, and has over 50 years of leadership experience. He and his guests will share inspirational leadership insights from their journey with God. These insights, gleaned from serving leaders in many nations, will transform your life and leadership. For more information on Larry's books and resources, visit LarryKreider.com. Welcome to the Larry Kreider Leadership Podcast. Larry Kreider here, and I've got in the studio today a good friend of mine, Bob Kreider, same last name as mine. Welcome, Bob. Thank you. Now, we're related, I'm sure, somehow, somewhere. I don't know necessarily how, but I've watched your life for years, and I've seen how guys use you in leadership, both on the church side, obviously. You've had various roles there, uh, but in many companies you're involved in, and uh, you served the Devon National Family so well on our stewardship team for many, many years, giving Mm -hmm. us sound business input, (laughs) holding us accountable to do the things we say we're going to do, and you've been amazing. So thank you for joining us on the podcast today. Well, it's an honor to to be invited. Well, it's an honor to have you here. Let's just start from the beginning. Talk to me about some of your roles in leadership. I know you're involved with uh, REMAX Pinnacle, you're involved with No Point Property Management, you're involved in church leadership at your church. Just talk about some of the roles in leadership that you have right now. Yeah, currently I'm president of North Point Property Management, also a founder, owner there. So uh, a couple partners, but that's a property management company that we're managing 1,100 plus units. 1,100 units. Wow. That's amazing. Um, Also broker record with Remax Pinnacle and an owner there Mm -hmm. as well. So, yeah. Okay, Um, good. And your local church? Newport, uh, Newport Church is, a, mm-hmm. is in the Dove family. Yep. Yeah. So serve as an elder there. You do. And you've done that for many years, done it so well. And uh, what's it like being on our Dove International Stewardship Team? So oh, that's a, a, yeah, fun. that's fun. That's fun to to see what what all is happening around the world yeah. through Dove International. Yeah. There's such a need for us to have people who hold us accountable, who understand a lot more about the business side, mm-hmm. the financial side than we would understand. I mean, most of us are you were involved in ministry to people and preaching and writing books and training leaders and all those things. But uh, you have helped us so much in that whole realm. So thank you, thank you. So so grateful. So tell me a bit about when you grew up. You know, uh, did you expect you'd be involved in all this kind of leadership stuff? Um, I don't know if it was expected. It was probably just was a part of what we did from yeah. from early on. I was the oldest of four boys and uh grew up on a on a in a vegetable farm okay. the main crop was celery you probably haven't yeah. heard that, that too often but sure. um so i was uh my dad was not one to to necessarily say hey you're too young to do this or right. or that we got we got put into different leadership things early i i remember standing on market before i could drive. I mean, really? that was, yeah. And selling vegetables at markets. Right. Really? Yeah. And, uh, uh, also well, I early on ran the celery business when I was older, but, yeah. uh, but yeah, it was a lot of opportunity, um, to work together as a family, but also in, sure. in that context. How did you get from that whole agriculture side to getting involved in property management, real estate, all that kind of thing? How did that happen? Cause I grew up, it's intriguing for me. I grew up a farm kid. There was, um, some years between the farm and real estate, okay. but uh, in other businesses and other, um, which probably we could talk about another time. But, um, but it was my dad actually that really? that had sold uh, and got out of farming, okay. uh, and had started getting into to investing in real estate, and knew that I was looking and and. Um, yeah, it was his initiative really? that kind of pulled me in. So you were blessed to have a dad who saw potential in you yeah. and pulled you in, into the whole base society. That is yeah. really, really intriguing. And so how many years now have you been involved in property management and, and real estate, that kind of thing? It's been a long time? Uh, it would be over 20. Yeah, 20, I think okay. it was 2001 I bought my first property. So. Okay. Now, on the spiritual side, uh, did you grow up in the church, or how did you come to Christ? Yeah, I grew up in a Christian family, okay. grew up in a Mennonite church, okay. uh, came to know the Lord or accepted Christ after um, the youth group at our church showed a movie called A Thief in the Night, which I would say is oh probably I remember that movie. Christian horror. 
Uh, <laughs> like scaring, scaring people into the Scaring kingdom. into the kingdom. Yeah, it's pretty much what happened. But <laughs> uh, honestly, the Lord was talking to me before sure. that, but that was kind of what put me over the over the edge, so yeah, to speak. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk more about about actual leadership principles. Uh, I mean, you're a believer in Christ. And you've got all these different businesses and places you're involved in leadership. Talk to me about teamwork. I know that's really close to your heart. How does that work for you, and why is that so important? Yeah, teamwork. Um, I I think it's you know we're all we all have different uh, gifts that we can give. And for me, as I look back over building teams, has been um, one of the things that that has been helpful or has been something that I've just done. And I, I think as, as I've gotten into um, building teams and it's just the, it's the recognition that um, other people can do these things, uh, certain things as good as I can and probably better. Right. And uh, there's things that I can do that are, that are, um, you know, good. And, sure. and, and so, we're going to go further together than yeah. than if I try to keep everything and hold everything yeah. uh, to my to myself. All of us have strengths, all of us have weaknesses, and we often say if we can resource our weaknesses with people who have a strength that we don't have. So, uh, like, how are you? Are what are you an out front person, for example? Uh, do you like to be the upfront person who's, you know, the people person? Is that you, or are you more of a strategic person? There's so many different kind of gifts we have; they're all good. Talk to me about you. Yeah, I, I wouldn't call myself an upfront person. I, I like to build the machine, so to speak. Okay. Um, although I, I enjoy people, of course. and uh, but I'm not the uh, I'm not the Larry Crater of like <laughs> in front of the um, uh, crowds of people. That's not something that right. that would be a growing edge for me. Okay. Um, okay. To be able to. To lead in, you from feel, the front. Do you feel good about being in your own skin, or do you wish? Well, I wish I could would be the guy up front. Like, do you feel good about being in your own skin, using the gifts that you have? Because you know you're the guy behind the scenes that makes it happen. I mean, that you're so good at that. Uh, no, it's probably the other way. I'm just as happy if I'm not. It's. Yeah. I think the growing edge is uh, when I need to do that, or recognize the right. times when it's it's uh, there's Everyone's as a leader you need to yeah. you need to lead from from the front. So yeah, that's that was that would be a current growing yeah. edge for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I love your love your heart. Something we often say on our podcast is that we believe we can find these small things we can change. That if we change, it'll make a massive difference in our lives, not our lives, but those that we serve, whether it's in business or the church or family or wh- wherever it would be. So, um, so are there any small things that you're saying, you know, and because I made a change, I saw some major things happen. So, I mean, whether you're getting the right people in your team or whatever that looks like. So, I've been, I've been really into. Uh, and I've, I've never met the man, so I, I don't know if it's good to reference him on a podcast, but ja- Jamie Winship yeah, I've heard and, and identity. Um, and one of the things he talks about is that, uh, recognizing that fear is probably uh, a wrong belief about ourself or God. That's good. And, and so recognizing that um, w- where there's fear, to recognize what that false belief is. Uh-huh. So... Yeah, in the season that I'm in, that's that is a that that is something that's that's Good. that's working on that. That hey, if if you're believing that there's not going to be enough, mm-hmm. um, what's behind that? Maybe that you don't yeah. really believe yeah. God's willing yeah. or able so to good. provide, mm-hmm. which is not true. So exactly. So the lie that that is it just to to confess the lie and to believe. Yep. believe the right things. Does Jamie have a book you'd recommend? Uh, he does, Living Fearless. Uh, you're not the first person who's mentioned him. Mm-hmm. And uh, God's used him to change a lot of people uh, to see them become the leaders God's called them to be. So that, that's great. So what do you do that helps you become a better leader, Bob? Uh, I, I, it's to, in different seasons, I read uh, books, mm-hmm. a lot of books. Um, also listen to to podcasts or right. um, uh, we just mentioned Jamie. I mean, mm-hmm. most of the, he's a lot of stuff on YouTube. So that's yep. um, that's that's part of, of what I do. That's great. The other thing that I, I do, which um, maybe don't talk about a lot, but 
I, I do I do half day pray days. Um, Talk about that with uh, particularly with the business. Um, yeah, in business leadership. Well, the idea came out of Kingdom and uh, Initiatives, right. which um, uh, we've been a part of for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, Dave Hoshins out of right. out of Australia mm-hmm. um, encourages half day pray days, and for me, that's that uh, is part of my job as a leader of businesses that. Um, God owns it all, and if yeah. we got to stay connected to to the boss, so to speak, to the owner, and yeah. um, that has helped mm. uh, keep me kind of aligned and and, yeah. and leading. So, talk more about the half day prayer day. Is that half a day a month? Half a day a week? Half a day a year? I do half day a week. Wow, that's amazing. Um, it's it's not always easy to mm-hmm. have have that. It ha- well, so I also have a business intercessor. Um, okay, talk about that. And that's so. Great. Uh, one of the things that has helped a lot is I have a standing meeting with him weekly. So, okay. so I, I it's not like I'm not meeting somebody. Yeah. Uh, so I, I treat it like any other appointment I have. And mm-hmm. if he's around, which um, most of the time he is. Uh, sure. And so, um, you know, wherever that is, wherever we're meeting, sometimes it's a a walking trail or sometimes sure. it's at our house or whatever. Sure. And so we spend the first block of time um, just kind of updating and, sure. and praying over the business. Sure. And then I'm on the rest of the day I, yeah. I'm out and I go, you know, I'm on my own. Yeah. But you said two things there that I think are really, really important. Number one, the half day pray day. I think that's, that's powerful. That's really powerful. And every week it's amazing. When you stay connected with the creator he gives us creativity and things that, and it's all from him anyway. Right. We got to stay connected. But then number two, having intercessors. Now, I find more and more business persons. I mean, we have personal intercessors, but I'm more involved in the ministry side, you know. And um, I'm meeting tonight with some of our personal intercessors, and that's been fantastic. I, I tell I tell Christian leaders, man, you're crazy if you don't have intercessors. You need people to stand with you. Right. The same thing is true in the business world in the kingdom, which is just as much Christian, just as much kingdom as what I do. And so I, I appreciate what you're, what you're sharing about that. What would you say to a younger leader who would ask you for advice on how to be healthy? Yeah, I, I think um, the, the first thing I would say would be set boundaries on your time, okay. particularly if, uh, if you have a young family yeah. or, or even, even if there isn't kids, set boundaries right. on your time. I, I know when you know, some of the first businesses I started and the office was in the house and yeah. – if if things I mean work is always calling right and if you didn't set that boundary I, I for me anyway I could find myself yeah. um, oh I don't know what I do I find myself at the desk sure, and I'm working sure. and and not disengage you know kind of disengaging from right. from uh, the family so um, yeah that would be the that would be the first thing I would say uh, mm-hmm. set set boundaries on on your time and and mm-hmm. when you're going to work and when you're not. I mean, we all know that, you know, crisis happens and there's times you, you can't help it. But if you set the boundaries, most things are not a crisis. True. Right? Well, then the, and the, the second thing that I would say is there, there are few emergencies, yeah. real, real emergencies. Yeah. Um, you need to understand when it is an emergency and respond appropriately. But um, the emotion of the, whether it's a customer or yeah. or depending on what's going on, um, to recognize when it yeah. is a real emergency yeah. and when it isn't. Yeah. Yeah, Bob, have you had mentors in your life? And is that important to you? You mentioned Jamie, for example, and he'd be probably a mentor, you know, on podcasts and right. you know, YouTube and all that. But any other way you've had mentors in your life, has that been helpful to you in any way? Yeah, obviously, early on, my dad, dad uh, right. was, was a mentor. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, over the years, I've um, made peer. Uh, I mean, have had a lot of peer That's mentors. Um, yeah. Also, part of a group uh, that actually Ron leads called Kingdom Link, um, yeah. which is a group of business owners. Maybe Ron uh, Meyer works here in Devon in National. Devon National yeah. Yep. So that's been, uh, and that's kind of a peer thing as yeah, well. It's, but right. uh, but it's really important to be connected yeah, with other business owners, business, mm-hmm. business leaders. Um, right. Because it can be yeah. situations where if you don't you don't have somebody to talk to, it it can feel lonely, mm-hmm. as oh. as you well know. Oh yeah, I'm glad you mentioned peer mentoring because often 
we, I've got a lot of friends that I relate to in my, my area of work, which would be more in Christian leadership, playing churches worldwide, those kind of things. But I've got mentors. Some are, you know, I really look up to, they're older, wiser. Mm-hmm. And I have other mentors in my age or even younger that we just connect. We're doing the same thing in life. And uh, and I learned from them. I mean, just one little, all you need is one little change can change your life. Yeah. And often they can say something or something that they'd be thinking that I never thought of. It makes all the difference in the world. So you found the same, that peer mentoring worked for you. Yeah, very much. Good. So, yes, it is important to have mentors. I, I agree completely. Now, anything else that you'd like to share with our listeners? We have a few minutes yet. Anything else you'd like to share with our listeners today about leadership? Things that you've learned about leadership that would be a blessing to leaders. Again, we have we have leaders uh, from around the world listening uh, on this podcast. And these basic principles work anywhere. So whether you're in Asia or in South America or America, wherever, these basic leadership principles will work anywhere. Any, anything else you'd say? was thinking through some of the mistakes that I've made over the years. Uh, um, and uh, Danielle and I were talking about this, and, and this was in the church context. We did some things um, before we were part of the Dove Network in a mm-hmm. church we were at previously where um, we were in leadership, but not all the decision makers were present when when we did some things in a group setting. Um, and so I guess the one thing that we learned is make sure that the key people That's are – are looped in if they're not present or Mm -hmm. that there's just good communication there because it can, it can cause challenge. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, Well, people, if they're in an on a leadership team and they're involved in helping make the decision, it's not going to work. Right. You need buy-in. You need buy-in. You do. And they carry something that we all need. Sometimes it happens because we just got to get the job done. We got to make a decision and uh, it just pays to wait a little longer. You're right. And get buy-in from everyone who's involved. Yeah. Anything else? Any, any other mistakes you made? Oh uh, yeah, that's the only one you made. Lots, only of, one. <laughs> lots of mistakes. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I so I started a construction company. Uh, this would this would have been years ago, and and uh, it was probably one of the mistakes I made there. Is I was a little aggressive in the growth of it, and okay. then we well then two thousand eight hit, and yeah. that was uh, so the. the the business still exists. I'm not a part of it anymore. Yeah. But looking back, it was a real learning experience to, to really kind of not see what was coming there, but also yeah. just being maybe more aggressive than I should have in growth. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I like to grow things, but... Uh, right, but we all do. Yeah. And maybe the other thing would be, um, and this is uh, for me personally, maybe it helps somebody out sure. there, but I don't tend to advocate well for myself. Okay. Uh, and and so learning to be able to say what you need yeah. uh, in certain situations. Sure. For me, not everybody has that problem that, let's say, right. or makes that mistake. Many but, do, though. Many. But, I'd yeah. say even most people probably do. Yeah. Yeah. So be be honest about, yeah. about what you need. and Clear and, communication. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Well, Remax Pinnacle, North Point Property Management, your local church, Stewardship Team, Dev International, plus a bunch of other stuff. Anything else that you've learned over the years you want to share with us? We only have a couple of minutes left. Anything else that you say, here's something I really want to say. This is important for present leaders or for future leaders, whether they're right here in USA or whether they're in some other part of the world. Anything else that you say? And by the way, while you're thinking about that, those who want to know more about Bob Kreider and all that God's doing through him, check out the show notes and also other information about things we talked about today. Check that out. Bob, what else you got? I, I go back to um, to the team and, and empowering your team or your staff that uh, they need to know that you have their backs, that when you give them responsibility that you're not going to come back and and uh, you know, rip them a new one. I guess I don't know how to right, better say right. that because they made a mistake. Give them latitude to make mistakes. Right. Obviously, I tell I tell our staff like make the decision. And if it's and if it if we should have done something differently, mm-hmm. we'll talk about that. But don't suffer from you know decision paralysis because right. you're afraid of what yeah what might happen. That, yeah. You know, we we have your back. Yeah, and uh, that's so important. And so as a leader to to really walk that out so that if they're in a situation with a client, um, in our context, there are times where 
clients will be asking to talk to another level and we okay. don't let it happen okay. because as soon as they do, they go around the person yeah. in front of them every time. Exactly. And so, so to have that person know I'm it right. and we're, we're in some cases standing right at their shoulder, giving them uh, feedback, yeah. but, uh, or, or coaching them and how to do it. But right. the, the person that they're dealing with doesn't know yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, we devalue our teams, devalue exactly. our staff, devalue those who serve with us. So yeah. I really, really affirm that's a really this, important, yeah. important principle. Yeah. And, that's, and that just then helps people develop into their leadership and, and be able to take on more responsibility. Right. And, exactly. And, uh, yeah, it yeah. makes, makes well, it Well, I happen to live in the same county as you, and I know some of your employees, and they all speak highly of you. So it says a lot for you. Any last-minute advice you have for our listeners around the world? Um. I think if you're in leadership, look for the potential in your people and get behind it That's and good. promote them. Yes. Um, I think we make mistakes sometimes that person's too young or they don't have enough experience or yep. whatever. And, and if that's the case, we may need to walk with them. But, yeah. but if the, the gifting is there, I guess we would yeah. say just um, get behind that and develop yeah. it because uh, it, it's, there's a lot of cool things that happen when that, exactly. when that happens. So. Bob Kreider, you're a real blessing, man. Thank you for being on the podcast today. And again, for anyone listening, you want to know more about Bob, you can check the show notes, any of the books, resources we talked about. That's all on the show notes. And so, again, what we do in this podcast, we find things that we can change because we're, we're into changing, not only become more like God, but changing to be better leaders. So we're honoring future leaders and training them to be all that they could ever be in the Lord. So thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you back here next week. God bless you all. Thank you for listening to Larry Kreider's Leadership Podcast. If you want more information about any of Larry's books, daily devotionals, small group resources, or any other teachings, go to LarryKreider.com. 